This is part 5 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss jQuery element selector, that is selecting elements by tag name. This is continuation to part 4, so please watch part 4 before proceeding. To select the elements by tag name, we use the jQuery element selector. And here is the syntax. To the dollar function, that is to the jQuery function, we pass the element tag name. The first example is going to return all the TD elements. So to the dollar function, we are passing the TD tag name within quotes. And this is going to return us all the TD elements. The second example is going to select all the anchor elements that are descendants of div element. So in this example, div element is the ancestor element and the anchor element is the descendant element. So basically this selector is going to tell, give us all the anchor elements that are nested inside a div element, no matter how deep the nesting is, as long as if an anchor element is present in a div element, give me all such anchor elements. That's what this second selector is going to do. And the third example is going to return us all the div, span, and anchor elements. Let's look at a few examples now. We'll be using this HTML for this demo and I'll have all this HTML available on my blog in case you need it and this is how the page will look like with that HTML. Now what we want to do is find all the TD elements on this page. So at the moment we've got only one HTML table and in that table we've got five rows and each row has got three TDs. That means 5 into 3 equals 15 TDs. So what we want to do is display the count of TD elements on this page using JavaScript alert. So let's see how to do that. So within the script section on this page, we already have the ready function. So here I'm going to use the JavaScript dollar function. And to this function, we are going to pass our selector. So we want to find all the TD elements. So I'm going to pass TD tag name within quotes. So what is this going to do? This is going to find all the TD elements, put them in a collection, and return that collection back. And the collection object that is returned has got this length property, which is going to give us the count of TD elements. And we want to display that using JavaScript alert. So let's save these changes, reload this page, and we should get 15 as the count. Now let's look at another example. Now what we want to do is change the background color of each of the TR that is present in this table to red. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So now we want to find TR element. So let's get rid of this alert function first. So to the JavaScript dollar function, we are going to pass TR element. And I'm going to use CSS function, JavaScript function. What property we want to change? We want to change background color property. And we want to change that to red. So what is this going to do? This is going to find all the TR elements and change their background color to red. So let's save these changes. And when we reload this page, the background color of the TRs should be changed to red. Now, let's alert the HTML content of this table. So if you look at this table, we've got you know, five TRs. So the entire HTML content of this table you know, we want to display that using a JavaScript alert. So what do we want to find? We want to find table element and we want to get the HTML of that table. So I'm using HTML JavaScript function. And let's display that using JavaScript alert. Save the changes. And when we reload this, look at that. We get the entire HTML content of that table element. Now. Instead of displaying the entire table HTML content like this, let's actually alert each table row HTML content. So I want to find all TR elements that are descendants of the table element. So basically, we are saying, give me all TR elements that are nested inside um, the table element. Let's get rid of this alert function from here. And what we want to do is loop through each of the TR element. So I'm going to use each function. And when we are looping through each TR element, we want to execute some code on each of that row. So I'm going to use an anonymous function. So 
So what do we want to do? We want to alert the HTML of each table row. So I'm going to use dollar function and use this keyword. So what is this keyword going to do here? This actually references the current TR element that we are looping through. And we want to get the HTML of the current table row that we are iterating over. And we want to alert that using JavaScript alert function. OK, so let's save these changes. And when we reload this, we should get the alert five times because we have got five tables in this table. So look at that. That's the first um, table row content. So within the first table row, we've got three TDs, C Sharp, ASP.NET, and SQL Server. That's what is written. When I click OK, we should get the second TR HTML content. Click OK, third, fourth, and fifth. Now, let's select and change the background color of all the div, span, and anchor elements. So, if you look at this page, we've got one, two, and three divs, one span, and two anchor elements. Now, we want to change the background color of all these elements to yellow. So, basically, the idea is to find all span elements, OK? and then all anchor elements, and then all div elements. Okay, So what is this going to do? This is going to find all the span, anchor, and div elements, put them in a collection, and return that collection back. And what we want to do with those elements, we want to change the background color. So I'm going to use the CSS function. And the property that we want to change is background-color. And we want to change that to hello. So let's save that reload the page so the notice that the background color of all div span and anchor elements has changed to background color now instead of changing all the anchor elements background color to yellow like this let's only change the background color of the anchor element that is a descendant of a div element so basically we want to change the background color of the anchor element that is nested inside a div element. So I'm going to get rid of this and then use div anchor. So basically here we are using ancestor descendant uh, syntax. So give me all anchor elements that are descendants of div element and change its background color to yellow. So let's save this. And if you look at the HTML here, so notice we've got two anchor elements, Prajeemtech Tech and Google. This Prajim Tech anchor element, this is nested inside a div element. But this anchor element, Google, this is not nested inside any div element. So when we reload this page, we expect only Prajim Tech link to have its background color change to yellow. Now, so on this page, we've got two tables. Now what we want to do is change the background color of even rows in the table to gray and odd rows to yellow. Look at this. The rows at index position 0, 1, and 2, the background is gray, whereas the rows at um, odd positions, that is 1, 3, and 5, they're actually yellow. And we want to do that for both the tables. OK? So let's see how to do that. And here is the HTML uh, to get those two tables. Again, I'll have this HTML available on my blog. So let's copy this HTML and paste it within our Visual Studio project. So I'm going to remove all this HTML content that is present within the body section and paste this here. Let's delete the script that we have within the script section. So let's save the changes and let's reload this page. OK, so we've got two tables. Now we want to change the background color of even rows to gray and odd rows to yellow. OK, so dollar. Now, what do we want to do? We want to find TR. Now, this is going to return us all the TR elements on the page. So, TR.CSS. Now, when we use the background hyphen color property here, and when we set that to gray, this is actually going to change the background color of all the TRs in both the tables. Look at that. And that's not what we want. We want to change the background color of only even rows. OK, 
So I can use even selector like this, tr colon even. So now when we reload this, look at that. Only the even rows in both the tables have their background color changed to gray. Now we want to change the odd rows background color to yellow. And look at that. The odd rows background color is changed to yellow. Now, this is going to change you know, the background color of each of the tables. Okay. Now, we don't want that. Let's say we want to change the background color of only one table like this. And in order to do, do that, we're going to combine the ID selector along with the element selector. Okay, so we want to change only the background color of the rows in the first table, but not in the second table. And if you look at this HTML, notice the tables have got IDs. The first table ID is table 1, and the second table ID is table 2. Okay, so within the selector function here, I'm going to say, you know, find table with ID, table 1, and for all the table rows, for all the even table rows within that table, change the background color to gray. And the second expression, you know, we'll do the similar thing, but for the odd rows. So let's save these changes, reload the page, and look at that. Now only the rows in table one are changed. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.